please uh, tell us why you're running and what made you run. Yeah, so hey everyone, uh, my name is Melba Pearson. I'm running to be the next state attorney for Miami-Dade County, Florida. And thank you, Katie, for having me on. And uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to our chat. So, you know, a little bit about me. I was prosecutor for 16 years in that same office. So I know what works well, I know what doesn't. And then I then became the deputy director for the ACLU of Florida. So I really got that like 30,000 foot view looking at criminal justice, throughout the state and again looking at things that we can be doing differently and better so you know over the course of my work and being president of the national black prosecutors association i got to see how some really great forward-thinking programs are being applied throughout the country and it's not happening here in miami-dade county and that and unfortunately uh, my opponent in her 27 years has never file charges against a police officer for an on-duty killing. So for me, there were so many missed opportunities for justice, and it's really time for a new direction in Miami-Dade County, and really someone who is going to be bold and fearless to make sure that justice is real and accessible for everyone, no matter how much money you have in your bank account or from where you're from. Did you have an aha moment? Uh, were you like, oh wow, this woman is not prosecuting prison guards, and we'll get into this for boiling a man to death, I maybe should challenge her. What was the, the thought process? Um, first, I had been very involved in the aftermath of the Darren Rainey case. So once that, I was already at the ACLU of Florida, right. and that memo actually got released while I was there, and the ACLU was one of the top critics of what was going on and, and why this case wasn't filed. So, you know, in reviewing that case, and I was seeing the missed opportunities, that bothered me. Then there was, right after that, the Jesus Menocal case, who was a Hialeah, a police sergeant in a city here called Hialeah and he was sexually assaulting women and girls. And, you know, my old office chose not to believe the one victim of the five that they spoke to and never moved forward in bringing accountability for his actions. So that bothered me. And then when we had the discussion around bail reform, because we really looked at the data here in Miami-Dade County, and there were really stark racial inequalities that were laid bare by the data, by the numbers. This wasn't an opinion. This was literally numbers in black and white. And my opponent was like, no, nothing to see here. Uh, you know, there's other reasons. And we're never going to have bail reform in Miami-Dade County because the voters don't want it. I'm like, well, let's find out. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So just to back up a little bit, could you tell us about those cases, the Darren Rainey case and then the Hialeah sexual uh, abuse cases? Sure. So Darren Rainey was a schizophrenic African-American man who was in custody at the Dade Correctional Institute. It was it's a prison here in South Florida. He was serving a sentence for cocaine possession, right? So just as a random side note, something that I've seen many times in the criminal justice system is that when you see people with mental illness, many times they use street drugs to self-medicate because they're not getting proper access right. to medical care and they're not receiving the prescription medications that help deal with the underlying condition. So this is not yeah, a really important point. Yeah. Yeah. So he was in custody. He had an episode and the there were four correctional officers that took him out of his cell and placed him in a shower. Now the shower is known for its scalding hot temperatures. They were referred to it, referring to it as a punishment shower. Um, the temperature in there ranges between 160 to 180 degrees. The staff would use that shower to make ramen noodles. Like it's not even oh like, oh, we get the water gosh. to go boil it. The water was already so hot they could stick the jar wow. under. The, the stream and their noodles would cook instantly. So oh this was God. a well-known uh, issue with the shower. And also being this type of prison shower, if you're inside of it, you do not have access to the control. So you can't turn the water on or off. You can't adjust the, the temperature and you can't adjust the volume of water coming. The guards left him in that shower for two hours until he died. Uh, witnesses speak about him screaming and begging to be let out and apologizing, and yet they still left him there until he passed away. The uh, graphic photos that come from the autopsy are something that, you know, once you see them, you can't unsee. It's, it's really horrible. So the medical examiner 
after a number of years, because this happened in 2012, right. and it was only as a result of the Miami Herald, which is our big newspaper, the Miami Herald, doing an investigative report, really following this case and itemizing what happened and starting to pose the questions of why has there never been any accountability, sometimes somewhat on behalf of the family, uh, that another autopsy, like an autopsy was done, an investigation was really, you know, went into high gear, and the medical examiner said that this was an accident because of the fact that he had medication for schizophrenia in his system, and somehow the heat of the shower could cause him to have a heart. I mean, it was just like, uh, how many different ways can we twist it to make this an accident? Yeah, right? somehow burning some, putting someone in illegally hot temperatures uh, is contraindicated uh, for for schizophrenia medication and but but for that he'd be totally fine alive and kicking right. exactly exactly contrary to common sense medicine and everything else yeah. so you know so my opponent has been saying well because of the medical examiner's report and all of this you know we couldn't go forward and in my review of the case because you know again do I have the full case file? No, but I had the medical examiner's report. I had the memo that was pretty detailed. I read some of the witness statements and I was like, we could totally file this case. It wouldn't be like a first degree or second degree murder case, but it would be like a manslaughter, something so that the officers would be held accountable. And there's a clear message being sent to the community that this type of behavior won't be tolerated. But my opponent refused to do so. And you know, now we have a situation where it's been eight years and there's been no justice for the Rainey family in the criminal justice system. They did receive a civil, a civil settlement of a multi-million dollar settlement, but at the end of the day, that doesn't bring your loved one back. And, and the guards are still free to go about and do this again to someone else. And is the reason it wouldn't be first or second degree murder, is that because you wouldn't get a conviction with that? Or is it just technically not that? Because first degree is when you have the intent, right? To kill? It's the premeditation. Premeditated. Okay, and mm -hmm. second degree is? Heat of passion or so incredibly reckless. The Engage in activity where it was, it's a likely outcome or exactly. possibility. Took exactly. a criminal law class in undergrad. Still remember it, kind of. Right? <laughs> I used to always think i go to law school. I still kind of consider it, but. Um, it's never too late. Right, yeah. Uh, we have a good friend, actually, family friend, who went to law school, I think, in her 40s or 50s and, like, represented Leonard Peltier. Not that that turned out so well, but it's not on her. You know, you have an entire right, right. You know, institutional <laughs> bias against him. Um, yeah. So because this seems like you put someone in a shower, you hear them screaming, apologizing, begging to be let out, saying, I can't take no more. That seems reckless. I agree, but here's the problem, and this is why I would file manslaughter. Um, the medical examiner's report said that the death was accidental slash natural causes. Right. So with that finding, you know, usually yeah. when you have a murder case, they say the manner of death is homicide. They put that right. in the medical right. examiner's right. report. So it's a really kind of an uphill battle to be able to prove right. murder when the medical examiner says accident. So you take that ruling of accident, which is what a manslaughter is. Right. It's an accident. Dental death. And then you could actually succeed in, in exactly. that. Um, exactly. Look at my inner Matlock. Right? Or, there you or, go. Or the reverse because <laughs> of defense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that case is like, is so incredibly disturbing. And it starts, I mean, I, I it starts like you mentioned, and I, I didn't even think about this part, which, but the self medicating because you're mentally ill. Um, there, you know, we are kind of famously in the United States bad at this issue. We're bad at funding mental health, um, bad at funding healthcare in general, um, very punitive. We use the criminal justice system for things that it should not be used for, like treating mental health. He had a terrible incident involving, I guess, smearing feces on the yeah. wall and on himself. And that's Probably an example of why, first of all, he should not have been in prison because that's exactly. not, you know, that's a very clear indication of mental illness. Um, and of course, yeah, you want to put the person in a, sh clean the person up. But again, putting that person in scalding water, that's uh, totally unjustifiable. They also had a reputation, these in uh, prison guards, correctional officers, for using that, as you said, to punish other people. They would do something called air trays where they would give uh, people trays without food on it. Apparently, they bribed one prisoner to attack another prisoner. One of the prisoners who had to clean up the shower afterwards said that he found like a chunk of flesh. Yeah. Um, it was just so incredibly brutal. And it's 
it's interesting that Fernandez Rundle didn't even feel the pressure. Forget the moral issue. I mean, I have no mm-hmm. faith there, but the lack of there's such blatant um, lack of accountability, not just for these officers, but for her that she didn't even feel the pressure to kind of do a a slap on the wrist. Yeah, were were people surprised or was that kind of expected given that she hadn't even pursued the case but and only did after there was a high profile uh, investigation, journalistic investigation? So, I mean, I I, I don't think a lot of people paid that much attention at first because again, it came out Friday afternoon, 4 p.m., nothing to see here. So there wasn't a ton of media attention at first. But Julie Brown, who was the journalist from the Miami Herald who did the series, picked up on it, and then it started to snowball. And so then what ended up happening in 2017, the Miami-Dade Democratic Party you know, basically calls her to the carpet and brought her into a general body meeting and basically confronted her on it. And as a result, they passed a resolution of no confidence against her and asked her to resign. Uh, She, of course, refused. But that has now resurfaced in the course of my race, where now they passed another resolution earlier this week saying, number one, you know, we asked you to step down in 2017. You did not do so. In the three years since, you you have still yet to charge a police officer for an on-duty killing. And at the end of the day, we have a moral obligation to, you know, talk about these issues and promote justice for all. And we believe Black Lives Matter. So as such, we're asking you to abandon your re-election campaign, step out of the race, and, you know, basically cease and desist everything that you're doing. So in in function, they strip the, the D in front of her name. (laughs) <laughs> right. And she was a Democrat. She is a Democrat. Okay. Yes. It's another sign of how far the Democrats have fallen. I mean, the fact that this person is not a Republican, uh, not to be too partisan about it, and my expectations are certainly not high, but wow.